Let's pray together. Lord, you're so wonderful and marvelous to us. What a privilege it is to share God's word in this class. What an honor it is to be a servant of the Lord. And Lord, I thank you for each one here today. Um, we all come with needs. We co all come needing direction. We all come needing prayer answered in our lives. And each one of us is different in those aspects for what the particulars are. But Lord, we know that you know them, you care about them. And may we just trust you and believe that God works miracles and can change our lives, change lives around us. Through your word today, we pray for a unique class that would leave here today like we didn't come in. And I'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're new to us, or you've been away, you, you've jumped into this new series pretty well. You missed last week, and I sort of review, but I'm not going to review in depth, so you can get some of the answers and fill them in, but I want to, uh, good, I just got it on, I want to uh, finish The Fallen today, and you have the next one uh, in episode two, and we'll get to that. But The Fallen is all about, and this series is all about two stars. The first one is Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Morning star. And then the second one is the bright and morning star, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. These whole series will be a panorama, and I'll sort of go chronologically, although the first lesson doesn't have a date. Because the fallen's all about Satan and the angels that fell from heaven and the reason that they fell and where did they fall to and some of the activities that were already set up and what they're involved with when man populates the earth. And so the fallen is not about you and me. That's another story. But the fallen is about Satan and his angels and the angels, his fallen, we would call them demons today and scripture would call them demons. I think angel is too good of a name for someone who once was created as an angel and they turned their back on God Almighty and sinned against him and wanted to take over and thrown out of heaven. And I think maybe the Bible gives us the word demons and devils to differentiate between fallen angels and angels. But maybe not. Maybe the Lord did that for a reason other than that. So that's the story. In the very first part, we looked about Lucifer, his creation, and his fall from heaven. And there were just basically two little sub-outlines, and we got through the first one. And it's from zero, Lucifer was zero to hero. If I could just elaborate just a minute, and I'm not going to show the pictures. We're not going there, and I'm sorry. I don't, I don't take time to go back and reteach everything. But understand that one thing that was true about Luther, that he was the most Glorious, wonderful, incredible creation of God to the point of eternity upon his creation. He was created greater to, to rule, actually rule, and to lead the other angels. He was above them, and he was more glorious, and he had access to the throne of grace and the throne of God and, and access to heaven. He, had, he could come and go anytime and anywhere he wanted to. And so here's an angel and here's a creation that he came from nothing. God created him to, to hero. And his desire and his, the, the drive of his heart was thy will. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it for you. But then we, get, we started last week his downfall. And, that, and he that was created from zero to hero became the hero that back down to zero when the desire of his heart was returned to say, I will, not thy will. And we went through scripture. Um, here is one of the verses that we've used. Lucifer was so alluring, so beautiful, until he was able to take out of the hand of God one-third of all the multitude of the angelic host. He grabbed them all. 
And we looked at this. If you want to do a study of Lucifer, the best places to start is Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah, 20, and Isaiah 14. Those are in your notes. But those are the best places to read about Lucifer and his fall and his heart and some of the issues that we have covered. We also, here is the, here is the steps of Lucifer's fall from grace to becoming Satan. We saw this. I mentioned we just saw the little outline from hero to zero, and everything became about him, I will. And he said in his heart, I'll ascend to heaven, I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God, meaning he says, I'll build a bigger and better heaven. I'll sit also upon the mount of the congregation, the sides of the, I'll send to the heights of the clouds. I'll be like the, like the most high. And the most high in the Hebrew is very interesting. It's Elohim, El Elohim. It means most high, or it translated the Hebrews would understand it, the possessor of the owner of all the universe, of heavens and earth. <coughs> but Lucifer blew it. The word of God says, yet you'll be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And I will make this comment many times over because we are going to spend hate to say this, we're going to spend some time in hell visiting the Word of God. Um, in fact, one of, the, one of our episodes in the future is called A Weekend in Hell. That's, that's one of them. Okay, that's, that's coming up in a bit. And you might want to miss that. Yeah, Make, book your, book your uh, weekend at Disney or somewhere, okay? Same thing. Okay. <laughs> Here is one star, Lucifer. He's gone Nova. He's burnt out. He's a, he fell out to the dark side, if I can use that word here, because hell is darkness. And he fell to the dark side. One star in a universe of fallen angels. I found really three neat pictures. I think this is the expulsion of them. <coughs> I found an artist's concept of the expulsion of Lucifer. Here was the, br the, bright, here was the morning star and the brilliance of him and the creation of him. And yet he turned. This is brand new. The pictures were brand new to you. And, and so if you were here last week, we should be about right on course. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. This is good. And a universe of fallen angels. Yeah. You understand that scripture says he took a third with him. And Carol brought up something, and uh, we were talking about the angels and which ones did he get. And the, the whole concept, we read just around the throne of grace, just around the throne were multitudes, 10,000 times 10,000, 10,000 angels, just around the throne of God, praising God and lifting God to glory to God. What's that do for everything else? Okay, and I got thinking about that and this week. See, every week it's new to me. I think I'm like a kid in a toy shop. You know, when I go walk at Walmart, do you know where I like to go walk the aisles? I'd love to go down, I'd love to push buttons. So I, I go at, not, I, I'd love to, I go to the toy department. That's my favorite, definitely. <laughs> but the but, then I go over to the, to the computers and the gizmos and the gadgets, you know, stuff that have buttons on them. Not, not vacuum cleaners and the useless stuff around the house, you know, blenders. That, nobody needs that stuff. All the, all the computers and the cool little things and stuff like that. I love to press buttons. And that's just, if it's a button, I want to push it and see, what does this do? That's really good. And, but anyway, 
This was, I was thinking about, I was just thinking about the angels. As we just came through Christmas. And you remember what happened? What happened? What made the, what made the shepherds afraid? I mean, literally the word afraid is scared to death in the Greek. It says there was a multitude of angels. Now you've got to understand this. I, I, I thought, I've got to share this with them. It's the same principle there. The sky around Bethlehem and the birth of Christ. We're not talking about three little sweet angels and a bunch of little cherubs from Valentine's Day parading around with arrows in a bow, welcoming, the, welcoming shepherds and welcoming the King of Kings and the Lord of Ho Lords into this world as a human. The sky was 360 and it was exploded with the brilliance and the brightness of angels. Now do you see why the wise men were afraid? I'd run too. It's a, it would be brilliance. It would be incredible, the scene. So it just wasn't the sky lit up like fireworks and wow, here's the savior of the world showing up. It was major. It was huge. Okay, what did Satan become? The Word of God tells us that Satan, first of all, has been, and pr almost primarily, he is our adversary. Satan wants nothing good for you and me. Nothing. He offers wonderful temptation, bright, shiny toys and things with buttons, and all sorts of gizmos and gadgets and wonderful, alluring things out in the world and temptations. Power, money, sex, um, what a, popularity, uh, this gadget and this and, and fame and you get to be, people recognize you for something. And Satan has a hard sell and he uses it with brilliance and cool things. But it's not for our good. It's not for our good. He is our enemy. He is our adversary. Write it down. Number two, the word of God, the, the Greek word for devil is diabolos. Diabolos. And that is the devil. That's where we get his name. And so sometimes in scripture, whenever you read across the devil, Satan, the devil, da 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 da, that is the Greek word that is used there. He's a rat. I'd like to have him over for dinner. <laughs> Not. He is an accuser. He stands today, this minute, the, as, I, as I walk this thing, he is before the throne of grace. He is accusing you and me. Every time we fall, every time we we falter, we get into trouble, we get away from the Lord. He throws that up in, in the face of God and saying, is that what Christianity is all about? Give me a break. And he accuses God that how can, how can the blood of Jesus Christ not make them perfect again? And I don't know what he's throwing at God, but here is the coolest thing. The Savior of the world is there as our mediator, as our defense, as the one who speaks on our behalf because we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and God doesn't see us as lost and fallen. He sees us through the blood of Jesus as someone who has been redeemed back into the fold, back into the family of God. Praise God. Amen. So understand, Satan is an accuser. Satan is a rat. He is a slanderer. He is extremely good about twisting truth. And then going and whenever something is spoken, twist it around a little bit more and accuse and try to pull the child of God down. He's a slanderer. Slanders. He slanders the name of Jesus. No wonder the word of God calls him a roaring lion. A lot of these things that I'm sharing with you will pop back in later on. We'll come back to individual type things. 
So as we wrap up this first lesson, and we will start the second one in a minute, I wrote this this morning. I said, what is an how do, what's the takeaway? If I close class, I'm not going to, if I said go home right now, what would I say go home with? This lesson really is from a long time ago to today, and Star Wars to you and to me is really about will wars in this lesson. It's a battle of our will. Lord, what will you have me to do? Or I'm going to do what I want to do. That's what this was all about. It was, it's all about, it's, this one's all about Dick Baker. And Dick, where's your heart? Where's your will? What are, what is the desires? What do you want to do? This lines up exactly with what Pastor Tim was talking about, about passion, about what is your desire? Are you out for a drive? Should I say, are you out for a space shot across the heavens and the skies? Or, or is there intent and is there purpose? Is there a solid drive and a passion? Lord, I love you. I, I need to love your book. Now I'll tell you, here's how to keep the fires going. Here's how, well, here's how I keep them going. When I look into the word of God, I say, Lord, make this brand new to me. Open this up. Make, make, what's, make this brand new to me. When Pastor Tim gets up to speak, this morning, uh, we, we see each other early. I mean, before 8 o'clock. We just sometimes just chat a minute. And this morning, I, I comment. I said, this is a really cool, catchy title for a sermon series. And he said, thank you. And I said, I said but, the, but I'm praying for the power of it. And that's what it has to be. I can come up with all these catchy little series and things like that, but there's got to be the power and the passion behind it. And see, you need to, every day, we need to pray and say, Lord, may my prayer life be new and fresh and vital. Stir it. Don't let it get like a bucket of paint that's a sat for a year. Let it be fresh and let it be stirred in my life. God needs it to stir us daily to keep us fresh. Or we're just going to harden over. And it's, so it's about, it's a battle of wills that we have. What do we want to do? How do we want to be? Well, here's my closing. With Lucifer and his followers gone from heaven, all may seem to be well. This is, listen, this is you don't know any Bible, okay? You don't know anything coming ahead. But not on planet Earth, coming up next, is paradise lost. And here's our next confrontation of stars and battles of wills and etc. Mandy, I'll go, we'll close this off and I'll let you get